Hi and welcome to my tutorial for the Mara top. Um, I am Anna, I am the head behind Sulala Patterns and I would like to give you some information about the pattern ahead before we start to sew. Mara is a pattern that is created from knit fabrics, talking um, French cherry, winter sweat. You can also use a nice punto if it has a lot of stretch and all kinds of different knit fabrics that do have a little bit of a nice drape. It's important that it's not too fluid because you want your shoulders to be shaped nicely. We don't have two sleeves to choose from. This is sleeve A. It is um, not gathered as you're probably used to with um, puffy shoulders, but it, the puffiness is created by folds that are created. And then we have a sleeve B. This is a little bit of an edgy shape with a one big fold at the top, creating a boxy shoulder. As you are probably used to with my sewing patterns, if you have sewn others, I do offer a lot of options to individualize your patterns. Talking um, neck bind options and width. You can also add cuffs at the sleeve or at the bottom of your top and for sure the two different sleeves. Also included in the tutorial is a way to create a really nice finish of the neckline. Um, you can for sure just sew it in with the overlocker or the desired stretch stitch, but I also offer a tutorial how to add in a neck band bind, which means that you have a really clean and nice finish. I quickly show you. Of your neck band with a small stripe of jersey. This is also included in the tutorial. Before you start sewing the Mara top, you need to check in if you have cut all pattern pieces that are required. So we have sleeve A here, sleeve B it would be the same. They are cut two in the opposite way. Then we have um, the back piece cut on fold. We have the front piece cut on fold. And if you desire to do a neckband bind, you will have prepared it as well as described in the pattern instructions. And we do have the neck ribbing either made from the same fabric or from a rib fabric. If you desire to do sleeve cuffs and bottom hem cuffs, those will be pattern pieces that will add up to those shown here. We start with sewing the shoulder seams, which means that you have to put the back piece and the front piece right sides facing on each other with the shoulder edges matching. Then you pin inside the fabric. Be careful that the needle does not reach over the fabric edge because if you want to sew with the overlock machine, um, you don't want your needle underneath the knife. It will damage the knife. So if you plan on sewing the edge with a zigzag or an overlock stitch on the basic machine, it doesn't matter, you can have your needle like this. So we will start by sewing the shoulder seams with a desired stretch stitch of your choice. Press the shoulder seams towards your back piece so that your seams are lying flat. Now we're off to this funny pattern piece with sleeve A. For sleeve B, you have to be a little patient. It will follow next. After showing how to prepare the sleeve A for setting in, I will show you how to prepare sleeve B for setting in to the shoulder. We have to create four folds on each side of the sleeve, on the uh, back and on the front side. Each of those folds, you can see this has a little bit of a tip in the edge of the sleeve and yeah on the paper pattern piece you can see those arrows that are pointing into the center direction of your sleeve um, leading up to this center notch which has to match the shoulder seam line of your top and I will show you now how to create those folds and it's not as tricky as it might seem you just grab it, you fold it in, and then you try to find the next 
notch and you just match the notch on the tip to the notch next above. Pin tightly. I always prefer to use two pins because it's less movement in there. Then you move on to the next tip. Again, fold at the notch, figure out where the next notch is and pin it together. You would just continue like this for the next two ones until you reach the top and then you, you will start at the opposite side folding upwards as well. Once you finish pinning all your folds up to the center direction, you will notice that you already created a nice lot of volume for the shoulder to, to fit in. And next step will be that you baste all the folds with your machine in like one centimeter um, distance to the fabric edge and you just use your straight, sti straight stitch that you set to, dif uh, to difference five or to, yeah, I don't know what it is in English. Um, you set it on five so that you have a wide stitch that you can re remove easily afterwards. This is um, really important because when you're working with the overlock lock or with another stretch stitch, to sew in the sleeve into the shoulder section of your bodice. Um, the folds will easily move if you don't fix them. So just, just use the straight stitch to fix them. Really important when sewing with knits on the machine, please, please, please change your common standard needle to a jersey or a knitting needle because it has a different tip and otherwise you would hurt your fabric and get folds. Change your stitch length from two and a half, which is standard, to five, so that you can easily remove the thread afterwards. When basting with a machine, it's important that you don't pull or push on the fabric so that you keep it at the same um, length as it should be. Also, make sure that the thread does not gather accidentally the fabric, but let, uh, keeps it as it is. Now you are prepared to set in the sleeves into the shoulder section of your top. Um, the instructions for how to do sleeve B and how to set sleeve B in will follow afterwards. When setting in the sleeves into the shoulder, it's important to first notice where's the back. In my case, this is the back side. This is the front side and to make sure that the notches on your sleeve really match them. So for the front you have one notch and you have one notch. So you will want to match them exactly and pin it nicely. For the following you will notice that there are a lot of notches. <laughs> um, each notch in the following will match one fold. So. Here you see you have one notch and you have the fold and they should line up nicely. And you can just go on like this. So we, again, we have fold, top of the fold and notch, pin. Again, pin in a way that you don't harm your machine. Then again, we have notch, fold, notch, fold. And you already entered the top of your sleeve and it should nicely align with the shoulder seam. Show it a little bit closer. And for the back of the sleeve, it's the same. You again have notch and top of the fold, and you will just line them up nicely.
When you finish, you will do the same for the second sleeve and afterwards you will turn you to your machine and finish off the edges um, and sew the sleeve into the shoulder section with a method of your choice, either zigzag or with a overlock machine. After sewing in the sleeve, you can remove the base stitching. Careful that you don't hurt the fabric. Um, and afterwards, you will sew the side seams. Now I'm showing you how to prepare the sleeve B for sewing it into the shoulder. And it's pretty easy. You have notches for the back too. You have notches for the front sleeve and you have three notches at the top of your sleeve pattern. So there is one in the center and two a little bit uh, more on the sides. And you just fold it over. Make sure that you have your sides folded over opposite so that you have a sleeve for the right and for the left side of your shirt. And then you just match the notches at the center. Make sure that this one is directly on fold and you just sew here. I already prepared the other sleeve to show you. Um, after sewing, it's important that you pull the thread into the seam and that you don't cut it at the closed edge. Otherwise it will open and your shirt will be ruined. For setting in the sleeve, you will um, match the shoulder seam of your sleeve and the shoulder seam of your top. Make sure that the back of your sleeve is on the back and that your fabric is lying right sides facing. So you will want to pin it here exactly right next to the seam on both sides so that you have a clean seam line. When you open it, that this will just be ongoing. Then you pin your front sleeve to the front of your top. Same with the back, back sleeve to back of your bodice. And fill in with needles. Repeat the same steps for the other side and then you will sew the sleeve to the bodice. Your sleeve is looking a little bit weird now, I have to confess. <laughs> but um, there's one step left before you can close the side seams. Um, you have this notch at the middle of your seam of the sleeve top and you just fold it over to the back of your top so to the back side, not to the front, but to the back side, this is important. And if you fold it exactly at the notch, it will meet the new seam where you have sewn in the sleeve. So you will pin it here exactly on the seam line and you will just sew back and forth a little bit with a normal straight stitch, standard stitch, to fix it here so that it won't move anymore. If you turn it now, you can already see the sleeve as it will be when you have sewn it and when it is finished. Now you're ready to sew the side seams. You do it in the same manner as you sew the side seams with this sleeve A. Now pin the sleeve and the sides for sewing the sides and when you look at the underarm seam it's really important for a nice looking sew that those really meet. So you will want to align them and then directly put a pin next to the seam line so that there is nothing that will move. Just be careful when sewing that this will not ruin your machine. So, then you will pin the rest. If you have stripes or pattern, you will make sure that it uh, matches nicely. And then you finish the edge off with a desired stretch stitch. When you finished sewing the side seams, you can now check by putting on your top if you like the length of the sleeves and if you like the bottom length. If not, you can now adjust slightly and shorten if necessary. 
and next step would be that you finish off the sleeve and the bottom hem with a desired method this could be either that you add cuffs as described in the instructions or you just turn the um, hem inside it's the same on the sleeves two centimeter turned inside folded inside and then you finish it off with a twin needle on the right side of the fabric or with this this zigzag stitch or if you have one with a cover logic if you've finished the seam there will be slightly excess fabric and just cut it off right next to the seam without hurting the seams so that you don't have any bulk in here I thought I'd quickly show you how I prepare the neckband to, before sewing it in. Um, you sew it together at the short side with the right sides facing. I always prefer to clip in slightly almost next to the seam without clipping into the inner seam so you can fold it into two directions and it's way more flat than when you fold it into one direction. Also, what is important before you start to sew in the neck band is that you mark the center front. This is what will get to the center front. Um, yeah. Afterwards, you just fold it lengthwise and press. Besides marking the, where is it? The center front of your neck band. You also want to notch or mark the back, uh, center back and the center front of your top so that you can pin on the neckband without any complications. So the seam of your neckband will match the center back, pin in nicely and as you might think already The notch on your neckband in the front will go to the center front. Afterwards, you will distribute the fabric on the neckband evenly. So probably put one in the, um, in the middle and then you just fill in. You need to pull the neckband slightly so that it matches the neckline. So I quickly show you how it looks when you also want to attach the neck band bind. So you start at the back of your top, right next to the seam allowance without overlapping them, but on the outside. So you will have folded in like half a centimeter on both sides. Here it's the same, it's right next to the seam allowance, but not overlapping with it, so that you don't have too much fabric in one space. And then you just distribute it evenly to the neckline of the back, and pin it in place. Make sure that you don't miss any layer, that all layers are aligned on one edge and then you will just sew all around the neck band or the neck bind. Um, what is important, if you want the neck band bind, you will start at the center back so you can hide the seam the easiest and have the nicest look of your neckline. And if you skip this and just sew the normal neck bind, you will start at one of the shoulder seams because that's the easiest to hide the end and the beginning of your seam line. For everyone who just wants to do the normal neck bind, you are finished. Or if you like to, you can top stitch along the neckline with a narrow edge stitch to make it look a little bit more neat and to keep the seam from moving. This is something that I always recommend, but you can also just leave it like it is if you prefer it. If you have a neck band bind, 
I already prepared half of it to show it. Um, you would just fold it under the seam allowance of the neck band. You really want to tuck it in tight. <laughs> Ask your kids when you put them to sleep if you have some. Um, and make sure that you have it evenly tucked in with the same distance and especially on the corners you have to be a little bit more careful and more precise to have a really nice corner shape here also pin exactly at the corner with a pin otherwise it will start to move and yeah just finish it off at the machine i will show you in a second how to do it if you like to sew the neckband bind it's important that you switch to a um, narrow edge stitch foot or edge, edge stitch foot sorry my English. Um, and that you start at the upper corner of one side it doesn't matter if you choose this side or this whatever you prefer just start at the top corner of your neckband bind also it's important that you sew the first stitches down to almost the bottom edge but that you stay in the same distance as your stitching is and then um, leave the needle in the fabric and turn it and preview it here. If you like to add some top stitching to the neckline, um, I would recommend to do it in between those two ends throughout the front. So over the neck bind um, and the neck band binding, there won't be any seam going, but you can do it in front at the front. <laughs> 